Hello and welcome to another Drupal Easy screencast. In this screencast, we're going to be looking at two divergent Git branches, each with changes to the composer dependencies of a project. So in this case, when you have two divergent branches where each branch has a change in the composer dependencies, you will hit a code conflict, specifically in the composer.lock file, due to the content hash being a generated value. Now it's a value that appears in the composer.lock file that is generated by a mathematical function, which includes all of the given dependencies for a project. So in this example, we're going to be merging the feature one branch into the master branch, and we're going to hit a conflict, and let's just talk about what that conflict looks like and how we can resolve that. So the first step is we're going to kick off our merge. You can see uh, head is pointing at the master branch on commit 777, and we're merging in the feature one branch. And um, we should also talk about ours and theirs. Ours generally refers to commits that are tracking along with the head playhead, the, the git playhead, um, where theirs refer to commits on the branch that is being merged in, in this case. So when a merge happens, uh, the playhead doesn't move backwards like it does in, in a rebase, but basically Git looks at the state of the code between, in this case, the 555 commit and the 777 commit, and will create a new commit that will try to rectify the changes in 555 and 777. In this case, it will not be able to do it. We will hit a code conflict because of that content hash. So when we hit that code conflict, we have to deal with that. Now, a lot of times you will only get a code conflict in the composer.lock file, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Sometimes you might end up with a code conflict in the composer.json file. If that's the case, that's normally very easy to resolve. Edit the file, resolve the conflict, and mark it as resolved with git add composer.json. If your Git repository is committing the project dependencies, then you're likely to also have a code conflict in the vendor slash composer slash install.json file. And normally what you're going to do is you're just going to do a git checkout of that file using dash dash hours. And we're going to talk about the dash dash hours here in a second. Actually, let's talk about it right now. Um, when the composer.lock file is, on, is in conflict, it's impossible to choose ours or theirs and have it fully rectified. Because remember, that content hash value that appears inside the composer.lock file is calculated based on the dependencies present in the particular branch. So neither the value of the content hash in the 555 commit or in the 777 commit is correct. Once those two branches are merged, then there's going to be a new value of the content hash, one that has to be calculated. So the first thing we're going to do is we just have to pick one that we're going to start off with. So when we do a git checkout compose.lock dash dash hours, we're basically telling git to use the version of the composer.lock in hours. When you're merging, that's the branch you're currently on, which would be the master branch. So that will sort of clear, well, as far as Git's concerned, that will clear up all of your code conflicts. But we still have a problem is that our composer.lock isn't really up to date. We just kind of took the one that's, you know, the same as 777. It doesn't have any of the information from the feature one branch. And that's what we need to fix. And we can easily fix that with composer update dash dash lock. Now, this is a composer update command that doesn't actually update any dependencies. It just regenerates your lock file based on the contents of the composer.json, the composer.lock, and your vendor directory. So we, when we run this command, it will look at the code base, it will look what's in the composer.json, it will look what's in the composer.lock, it will look what's in the vendor directory, and it will regenerate that composer.lock file with an updated content hash that includes the dependencies from both the feature one and the master branch. After we update that, we're going to add that. So we're going to do a git add to mark that as resolved. And once everything's marked as resolved, we can complete our git commit. And normally if you do this, you're going to be sent into VI to, to finish up your message. Um, but this will 
basically signal to Git that we're ready to complete the merge. We issue the git commit command, and that will complete the commit, and then we can go about our business. And the 888 commit will now contain the updated composer.lock file. And in general, that is how you rectify composer.lock code conflicts in your divergent branches. Okay, thanks for watching.